we doing the prayer? Good morning, and welcome to our Jesuit Alumni Ministry, or JAM Mass, which is held at 11 o'clock on the first Sunday of every month. We are so happy to be joined by alumni and friends from the Jesuit schools, colleges, and universities around the country for this Mass. And you will all enjoy today's sermon and wonderful music. After next month's JAM Mass on February 7th, please consider joining us for a Zoom discussion of Pope Francis' latest encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, on fraternity and social friendship. This is a beautiful reflection on humanity's path towards peace and fraternal love, which encourages us to substitute kindness and forgiveness for aggression and intolerance. The encyclical is available online for free. You can download it. And please contact the church at 323-462-6311 or email us at JesuitAlumniHollywood at gmail.com for more information. Good morning and welcome to Blessed Sacrament Church. Today we celebrate the Epiphany of the Lord. Before we begin, we ask that you please turn off your cell phone or put them on a silent mode. Let us all stand and give greetings to one another. The Peace Prayer of St. Francis. Together, let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. Where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we're born to eternal life. Amen. Our presider for this Mass is Father Frank. And our gathering song is Lord Every Nation.
Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, oh God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. We continue our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Happy New Year. Happy Feast of the Epiphany. Welcome our parishioners from Blessed Sacrament here under the tent. Welcome to everyone watching online at home and welcome to our Jesuit alumni. In the middle of a pandemic, it is nothing less than a miracle we have been able to keep all this going. I'm delighted to be presiding with you on this Feast of the Epiphany, especially because on our Jesuit parish, we have a Jesuit Pope who likes to say a lot about that light that will be helpful to us. So as we gather, as we start a new year, let us take just a moment to turn the gaze inwards and notice the many beautiful ways God is stirring in our hearts on this Feast of the Epiphany. We praise you, O Lord, down from on high. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie eleison. We praise you, O Lord, Alpha and Omega, Christ, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God. Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, God, 
who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to all the nations by the guidance of a star. Grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see, for your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you, the wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. judgment and though the king and with your justice the king's son he shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted one with judgment lord every nation on earth will adore you Justice shall flower in the days And profound peace till the moon be no more May he rule from sea to sea And from the river to the ends of the earth Lord, every nation on earth Will adore you the kings of Tarshish and the Isles shall offer gifts. The king of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. The king shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out And the afflicted when he has no one to help him He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor And lives to the poor he shall save Lord, every nation on earth will adore you
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in their generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the day of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is this newborn king? We saw his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. Now when King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of that star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go search diligently for that child, and when you find him, bring me word, so that I too may pay him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, that star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was born. They were overjoyed at seeing that star. And on entering the house, 
they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. And then they opened their treasures and offered him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The good news of the Lord. Praise to you. Please be seated. On my Facebook page this morning, they showed the three magi being in, uh, questioned about where were their masks. And they said, not to worry, we're all family. <laughs> um, but on this Feast of the Epiphany, in the middle of a crisis, in the middle of a pandemic, whether we're watching this mass from home as a Jesuit alumni, or as a parishioner or here under these beautiful tents in Hollywood, we all hear the same message and we all need the same thing. During this pandemic, make no mistake about it, we need a star. And the Magi, when they see that star, the psychologists and me couldn't help but notice they feel one thing, overjoyed. And when they feel overjoyed, something very unusual happens. They depart by another route. And we can do the same thing. In the middle of this pandemic, I'm reminded of the words of Dr. Gerald May when asked how, how to define addiction. A brilliant scholar, he says, let's go back to the French word from where addiction comes from. And he says addiction means to get nailed down. Brothers and sisters, I submit to all of you this morning that during this pandemic, in one way or another, all of us had at times felt nailed down. And speaking of addiction, Dr. Gabor Mate says, the importance is not to ask why the addiction, not why do we get nailed down, but why the pain. And in this middle of the pandemic, I don't have to tell you, just look around Hollywood. There is a lot of pain and suffering in our midst. And yes, more than ever today, we need a star. Personally, for me, that star came early this Christmas season in a book given to me by one of my directees titled, Let Us Dare to Dream, by none other than my favorite pontiff, Pope Francis. And the book is about how to not only survive, but come out of a pandemic. In this book, Let Us Dream, Pope Francis challenges us to be creators of our own future. And I'd like to share with you a couple of paragraphs I have personally found tremendously helpful in making it through this pandemic, in moving through this crisis. Pope Francis says, in a crisis, there is always a temptation to retreat. Of course, there are times when we must pull back for tactical reasons. 
as the Bible says, to your own tents, O Israel. But there are situations when it is neither right nor even human to do so. Jesus makes that clear in his famous parable of the Good Samaritan. When the Levite and the priest withdraw from the man left bleeding and beaten by thieves. They were making a functional retreat, by which I mean they're trying to preserve their own place, their roles, their status quo, when faced with the crises that test them. In a crisis, our functionalism is shaken loose. We have to revise and modify our roles and habits in order to emerge from the crises as better people. A crisis demands that our whole self be present. You can't retreat, pull back into old ways and roles. Think of the Samaritan. He stops, he pulls up, he acts. Enters into the world of the wounded man. He throws himself into the situation, into the other suffering, and in so, that Samaritan creates a new world. And from this crisis here at Blessed Sacrament, we can become, we can come out, Pope Francis tells us, better or worse. We can slide backwards or we can create something for new. For now, what we need is the chance to change, to make space for the new things we need. And it's like God says to Isaiah, come, let's talk this whole thing over. And if you're ready to listen, we will have a great future. We will have a great future. These brothers and sisters are hopeful times. Here at our parish on Blessed Sacrament, there is much change and hope present. As we enter the new year, our parish, the Jesuit alumni, we are hopeful. We get ready to say goodbye to Yolanda Brown as our parish administrator. She has beautifully laid the ground for the work we face. Father Ike is preparing in one week to step up to be our temporary pastor for the next six months. And in June, the provincial will send a new Jesuit pastor to Blessed Sacrament. So clearly this is a time in the spirit of St. Ignatius of Loyola to reimagine church and to come out of this pandemic, as Pope Francis says, not the same, but better. And we know spirituality, especially the spirituality of St. Ignatius, is about hope. It's about imagination. It's about breathing. Spirituality means breath. I'm reminded of the Sacred Heart Sister, Sister Carol Bialek, wrote a beautiful poem titled Breathing Underwater. During a pandemic, we all need to learn to breathe underwater. And the last line of her beautiful poem is where she hits it out of the park. She says, I traded my home for a coral castle and I learned to breathe underwater. I am going to su suggest something I believe in my very soul. This physical church, I don't need to tell any of you, is locked shut. We are invited to go somewhere new. And I'm sure some of you are asking, Father Frank, where is this somewhere new? 
Well, it's pretty simple to find. Just look outside the fence. We are invited to go to the streets. As Father General of the Jesuits again and again invites us to have a preferential option for the poor. Clearly, we do not know how to breathe underwater. And at times during this pandemic, it can feel like we're drowning. But we can all breathe underwater. We do this by naming our reality of how can we live in a city where the latest statistics show that 70,000 people are living on the streets and look the other way. We need to take a stand to move forward with Father Provincial's words and Father General words of a preferential option for the poor, not only in our world, but right here in Hollywood. Where are we broken and we need to be healed? The interesting thing about that preferential option for the poor, I always find, I don't need to tell you about systemic sin. We know what that is. But we also have to have a preferential option for the poor within our own hearts and our own souls. The parts of our souls that are broken and need of healing. St. Ignatius never tires of telling us we cannot save ourselves. We need a savior. None of us can do this preferential option for the poor on our own. We need God's help. And until we recognize love, forgiveness, and embrace the poor part of ourselves, we will never hear this gospel. We will miss the star. Make no mistake, the poor hold the seed of the gospel. And in every age, in so far as the church incorporates the outcasts, those that it pushes to the edge, those that it hates and rejects, the church rediscovers Christ in the least of our brothers and the sisters in those people we want to call nobodies. And yet we know at the end, this is where Christ can always be found. And it is here we will be judged. Not on our ability to attend church services, not even how we obey the commandments, but on one thing, our ability to recognize the Holy One to see that star in the least of our brothers and sisters. Our Jesuit parish at Blessed Sacrament is continually being taught by the poor, and they hold the greatest truth for us. Again and again, I say I am the luckiest Jesuit in the world because I get to experience this on almost a daily basis. Yesterday, I'm looking at Letty at the food pantry. Not do we give the poor the least, but we give them the best. We handed out so many of the best tamales I've ever tasted, it almost brought tears to my eyes. And I will applaud you, Letty. People on the streets of Hollywood stopped and gave money donations of water. I'm reminded yesterday when Bob told me, Father Frank, you should have been at Genevieve's Garden on New Year's Day. As great as the food pantry is, Blessed Sacrament School has given us their beautiful dining area where our least brothers and sisters can rest, restore, renew. I got some of Brother Henry's leftovers. Uh, delicious French bread with meat and soup, and what a beautiful way for our parish to start the new year. When we reach out to those on the periphery, Father General is correct. We get to glimpse that star. 
when we look at the hole in our own soul and know it cannot be redeemed by our own effort, we get to see the star. We get to imagine the church on this Feast of the Epiphany in a whole new way. The doors of the physical church may be locked, but the doors of this Jesuit church in Hollywood are open. Finally, allow me to return to the hope of Pope Francis, who would say on this Feast of the Epiphany that we are going to find a light in what he calls the overflow. Millions of people have asked themselves and each other, Pope Francis tells us, where in the world am I going to find God in this crisis? What comes to my mind is the overflow. I'm thinking of great rivers that gently swell so gradually that you hardly notice them. But then the moment comes, they burst the banks and pour forth. In our society, God's mercy breaks out at those overflow moments. Bursting out, breaking the traditional confines that have kept so many people from what they deserve. Shaking up our roles and shaking up our thinking. This overflow is to be found in the suffering that the crisis has revealed and the creative ways in which so many of us have responded. I see an overflow of mercy spilling out here in our midst. Hearts have been tested. The crisis has called forth in some a new courage and compassion. Some have been sifted and responded with ways to reimagine our world. Others come to the aid of those in need in concrete ways that transform our neighbor's suffering. Pope Francis says, this fills me with hope, that we might come out of this crisis better, but we have to see clearly, choose well, act right. Let's talk about how. Let's allow God's words to Isaiah to speak. Come, let us talk this over. Let us dare to dream. As parishioners, as Jesuit alumni on this beautiful Feast of the Epiphany, let's take Pope Francis's words to heart. Let us dare to dream how this Jesuit parish can be one whose primary focus is nothing less than a preferential option for those on the periphery. And, respond, and in response to Pope Francis's invitation on this beautiful feast day, let us talk this over. Let us dare to dream. God bless you. Happy New Year. Please stand. To move into the new year, let's renew our baptismal vows. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you renounce sin so to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, buried, rose from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, that communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and even life everlasting. Brothers and sisters, this is our faith. We are very, very proud to profess it in Christ Jesus. Amen.
God's arms are open wide and welcome to all who seek salvation. Let us bring to God the needs of all the world. For Christians throughout the world, as they work to manifest God's love in the midst of hardship, apathy, and persecution, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations of the world, the richest and the poorest, to learn to work together for the common good of all people, and especially during this time of the pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who seek to study the stars of the universe or the microbes on the earth, or in other ways seek to unlock the secrets of God's creation for the benefit of all humanity, especially for those working for the treatments and vaccines for COVID-19, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all newborn children, signs of hope for the world and for their parents and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and infirm of our community, Orlando Castro, <coughs> Joyce Holmes, Mark Bogan, Dr. Jose Perez and family, Candy Del Rosario, and Jim and Dee Dee Christian, and for all who suffer from COVID-19, for our recently deceased, Daniel Ayala, Alvina Maltos, Ramon Murillo, Wayne Boggin, and for all those who have died of COVID-19, and for the petitions and our box of intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray in a special way for Jeffrey Purdy and Urbano Amarin, and let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord of light, today you have revealed to the world your saving love. Hear these prayers and grant them in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing, and as we prepare to share God's gifts, let us say the generosity prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Lord, Lord teach, teach me, me to be, be generous. generous. Teach, teach me to serve you as you deserve, you deserve to, to give and not to count the cost, cost to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing that I do your will. Amen. And please be seated and take a moment to prepare your offerings as stewards of our church. We are grateful for your contributions that are needed, especially during this time. Try using our parish website. There is a donation button that provides options to contribute directly or choose Venmo, PayPal, or One Parish app. You can also mail checks to the rectory and those of you on live stream, please take time now to do that. Thank you. Faithful. 
my sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for, for our good of this holy acceptable. church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church in which are offered now, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. And it is truly right and just, our duty, salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies, faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and our Redeemer. Jesus always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the whole world that you are our Father and you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. And you are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on this journey called life. And blessed indeed is your Son, right here present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love 
and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures, breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of that last supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Father, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the very glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you this bread of life, this chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church here this morning in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we share communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, Bishop Clark, and all your holy men and women. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in words and in action to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as that living witness to truth and freedom, peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is finished, that we may come to that eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Ignatius, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of our church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy. of God you take away the sins of the world grant us grant us peace behold the Lamb of God behold him who takes away all the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb Lord enter under my but only say, say the word that my soul and shall be healed may the body and blood of Christ bring us to life eternal For our spiritual communion, we pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. And I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please be seated. We three kings of Orient are Bearing deep sweet travers afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king of Bethlehem's plain, God I bring. 
crown him again King forever ceasing never over us all to reign oh, oh star of wonder star of night star with royal beauty bright westward leading still proceeding guide us to thy Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always, everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and rever with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to, be, to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and let's get ready to enjoy the announcements. <laughs> And these are joyful announcements on this Feast of the Epiphany. As I reflect on uh, Father Frank's um, wonderful homily um, and look out at all of you and keeping those of you on our live stream in my heart, I do have an epiphany. As I look out at you, not only have we been joined to worship together by family members, by parishioners, uh, by Jesuit alumni, but also those who were formerly unhoused, and that Blessed Sacrament and the Center have accommodated with housing. They have not forgotten us, and we will never forget them. Welcome to all of you. And I must also express gratitude to Father Frank for having taken this seedling of an idea of a Jesuit alumni mass beyond the the borders of our doors of the church here at Blessed Sacrament into the borders, or actually beyond the borders of our nation, and some of you who are with us live stream, even internationally. I thank Carol Kozaraki and Ellen Kristen and Alicia Bell for furthering that with more reimagination so that Jesuit alumni now have a book club and even a speaker series. So thank you for all the ministries, for our liturgy ministry, uh, and for all in leadership, our pastoral team, our wonderful safety ministry, and our very loyal, loyal music ministry, our cantor Tom, Dr. Shackleon, who, who not only directs the music ministry, but our production team. And that production team, thank you, Little, Joseph, and Arnold, and all of you. So with a grateful, joyful heart, I do have a few announcements. Um, you are all invited, wow, to say a farewell. There's a, a special liturgy mass of, I guess, uh, blessings uh, for me next Sunday. And there will be, at the regularly scheduled times, 9 a.m. in Spanish, celebrated by Father Ike Udo, and 11 a.m. in English, celebrated by Bishop Edward Clark. And all are invited. Now, I say this contingent upon all the uncertainties, weather, uh, situations, COVID-19, whatever, at least you have been personally invited to whatever that looks like. Right now, all I need is just your continued prayers, and that's enough for me. You are also invited to Santo Nino Parish Mass on Sunday, January 24th at 11 a.m. And due to COVID-19 restrictions, the annual One Life LA event will be virtual on January 23rd. Uh, so please visit the One Life LA website to learn more about that. We invite you to visit our website where all church events, bulletins, mass times, and homilies are posted. Thank you and many blessings. Please stay seated for just one more uh, little short uh, additional to that announcement. Um, I would just say uh, what uh, Yolanda Brown said, uncertainties or no uncertainties, uh, I really want to make sure invite you all to the 11 next Sunday when Bishop Clark will be presiding. 
I don't care what happens, the provincial of the province has made sure that we, will, whether online, here, I don't know where, we've got, we're definitely going to uh, celebrate uh, Yolanda, uh, her, her, the gift she has been to this parish. I will tell you, I'm looking at Al, it's, can't, I can't believe seven years ago I knocked on that door and my sister had died. I wasn't sure how I was going to raise a 10-year-old kid as a Jesuit, and I thought a Jesuit parish would be helpful. And Yolanda said, I think we'll find some way for you to fit in here. And Trust me when I tell you, I could have never imagined the way I would fit in here. So uh, let's give Yolanda a great round of applause. This is only the beginning of the celebration. I always say life is a series of hellos and goodbyes, and the goodbye next Sunday, I promise you, is going to be an amazing send-off. Jesuit alumni, get online. Parishioners, come here, watch online. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Nourished by this feast of the Epiphany, let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. your son into the world. You chose the woman I love to bring him here. All this has so fast, help me allay the shock and fear. Teach me the role that I must play. Set a clear path, don't let me stray. an angel to Mary, 
And you sent an angel to me Clearing our minds And opening our hearts To what will be Keep them around us day by day Comforting, showing us the way a star to the wise men Is there a star out there for me? A light to shine when our world starts to darken A light to shine for us three For we also are three. So many twinkling in the night, help us discern which one is right. Be our star, light our way. Be our star. I pray Father You sent us far from our homeland Just when we'd most want to stay Not sure of just where to go He lies now in hell.